I think a lot of you guys owe Sweatsicle an apology. And this video might not make sense off the rip. You might have no idea what I'm talking about. But this should make sense very, very soon. Destiny 3 is a really, really hot topic right now, obviously. There's the code name Payback. There's all the other rumors and everything else about Destiny 3's coming. And it seems like relatively, not completely, but relatively, most of the reception on this is pretty positive. Most people are saying, we need a Destiny 3. We, you know, our game needs a, a restart. We, you know, this this is the best way forward. Destiny 2 can't last forever. Whatever. The the narrative is, has shifted to... You know, Destiny 3 being pretty positive. You know, I've seen YouTube videos of people talking about it. The comment sections seem pretty positive. I see tweets about it. The tweet receptions seem pretty positive. And that's great, and I'm glad, because personally, I want Destiny 3, and I've wanted a new game for a long time. I've been pretty vocal about it on, on my own streams, not really in video form or on Twitter, but in general, like, in my own community knows kind of how I feel about this. And there's other... This, there's others that have felt similarly. Um, you know, Evans had some thoughts on this on some of his Witch Queen videos as well. And I really wanted to hone in on this video, though, talking about Sweatsicle's video, or Eli's video, my brother, talking about Destiny 3 in the future, but talking about it in Witch Queen when it wasn't very popular to talk about Destiny 3. So let's go ahead and watch this. I want to give my thoughts and opinions on this, and I think there's a lot of people that really came after him for this that have now completely forgotten about those mean things that they've said, but I'm sure if they realize they probably, you know, owe the man an apology. And there's a lot of people that I feel like do personally, just because, you know, words can hurt, you know, doesn't mean that, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, he was, you know, completely, you know, super hurt by this, but like, you know, it, words can hurt, you know? So you, before throwing pitchforks at somebody, you know, just take the time to process. And this is with anything in life, not just this. It's just in general. So let's watch. All right, so right off the rip, this was made two years ago, as you guys can see. Um, March 11th, 2022. And you can see the like to dislike ratio. Like, for anybody not familiar with YouTube, this is a lot of dislikes compared to the likes. A lot of people didn't like this. And a lot of people didn't want to hear this and really just thought, you know, Sweat was just complaining. And it, it wasn't the case, and I'll, I'll explain this here in a second, but just know that when he talks and when most people talk, it's from a place of love for the game, you know, and wanting the game to be better. And I don't think a lot of people could see that back then. So let's uh, take a look at this, and then let's go from there. Nintendo 64 on the floor? Yes, it is. And that is also a CRT. Really we love our Mario. Also, yeah. I had no idea I was in this video. So I've streamed 281 hours. It's a lot of hours. Days. That is an average of almost 10 hours a day. I hate to say it, but we're going to have to play Wellspring today. Oh, no. King Glaive still won't drop. I need to get the blueprint to drop. Funny enough, we competed to see who could get those Glaives first. He lost his ignition code because of that. Three hours. Polaris Lance, you had to get kills with the per the perfect fifth perk. If you didn't get a kill with the perfect fifth perk, it didn't count. It was it was I think the first part he doesn't talk about it, then he probably gets to it in just a little bit. We get like a, a real secret mission slash We got whisper and outbreak back. Slash I wish we could get another community puzzle back. Good lord. Came out. People sat in the Ray of Sylvia and they waited for the secret guy to spawn here. So you, you brought the ball over here to like the statue, you slammed it and a secret boss spawned here and people thought it was going to be like something huge. What they should have done so what he's already talking about here, and I'll let him keep playing. I'm not going to stop him too much, at least not until he gets into more of the Destiny 3 stuff. But what he's already hinting at here, I can already kind of tell where this is going, um, is that the Throne World didn't really have the same life in, a, in elements of evolution that the Dreaming City had or that the Dreadnought had. Really, the Throne World, after we cheesed the chests and got our ranks to max and you finished the campaign... That was kind of the end of the throne world. The throne world did not live up to the Dreaming City or the Dreadnought. And the core of the game really feels a lot better when, you know, the main new uh, destination really thrives and has a lot of reason to be there. A lot of secrets, a lot of evolution where things change. You know, the raid gets beat, then a new mission comes out of nowhere, then a portal spawns, then Shattered Throne comes out of nowhere. You know, the evolution of things that keep you in the new destination that they made. And that was something that was very much lacking in the throne world, but let's let them continue. Done is they should have canceled Wellspring. They should have had like, I don't know, like a boss that shows up like every hour in each of these. Or just like an event 
that pops up every hour and you you actually have to like work together to grind it and it has a chance to drop that red border weapon but no cap like when just I the evolution playing, of the world the, the year it was like two months before forsaken came out they had a gambit like test stations there i was the most competitive like pve has ever been because everybody had like funny enough with gambit i mean gambit isn't a bad thing either gambit's just a case of if you leave a car on the side of the road no matter how nice it is and you don't maintenance it for three or four years the car is, is going to fail and it's going to die and it's going to stop working and it's going to rot it's kind of gambit you know even if you consider it a corvette i mean it shined at one point but if you leave it on the side of the road for four years like very it was like the same loadouts and you actually had to kind of sweat your cock off everything was even playing through. wish they'd just even throw another malfeasant style quest in it coil this game has always struggled with incentive and they still really aren't fixing that they did a, a really good job with the legendary campaign though i will say legendary campaign was great but it was very much a one-time experience you get like a cool emblem from doing it Let's go to my friends list. Now that people have beat the legendary campaign and the raid. He's explaining what I'm explaining. It was a great day one experience. It most definitely was. So, actually, this is a really good point. I just had like a eureka moment. How do you incentivize players in a game that's been ongoing for four years with things that are new? 100%. You can't. You have to make a new game. Eventually, you got to bite the bullet and go, okay, guys. And here it starts. What the game is right now is it's in a state where it's a constant chase to try and make weapons and abilities and combos better than they've done it before. And yeah, and, and this is true. And really, if you want to know the main reason why this originally started, it was Beyond Light. And so sunsetting was a colossal fail in Destiny 2. But sunsetting in general is not a bad idea. Now, keep in mind... As bad as it was, so don't grill me yet. At least let me, you know, explain where I'm going with this. Taken King, think about before then how hard you and I grind it for Galahorn. Yes, I'm speaking to you. Think about how hard you grind it for Galahorn. Think about how hard you grind it for Icebreaker. Think about how hard you grind it for XYZ weapon, Pocket Infinity, whatever. Whatever. Whatever the case may be. You know, the meaning of exotics was scaled way up in 2014 because how rare they were right they were so rare so when we got them it felt great like arguably i'd say greater than it feels to have stuff now i don't think anybody would argue that i don't think that's a hot take you know it felt better to have stuff then than it did now because it was so rare that you, you got your hand on anything it didn't matter what it was it was like oh i got my hands on red death is it you know good who cares it's an exotic i finally got something it just things are so rare that you never get anything so you know all i'm trying to get at here is that um things back in destiny when we really really cared about because we didn't get that much but even still, we got our, you know, our prized possessions, our trophies. Then Bungie sunset all of them. They sunset all of them when we um, got to Taken King. But Taken King is still looked at as one of the best times in Destiny. So how in the world did we get one of our best times in Destiny alongside of the, the forbidden word that is sunsetting, which everybody hates now? Well, the thing is, is it's all just a scale. And if you take, you know, this amount out. You got to put this amount or maybe even a little bit more in. And that's why I think Taken King succeeded was because they did take quite a few things out. And when I mean out, I don't mean out, obviously, just like sunset um, where they weren't able to get to the max power. So they took a lot out. But then we were given way more than we originally had. And so even though we did lose a lot of our trophies and our prized possessions, it didn't hurt that bad. And no one uh, when when I say Taken King. People don't think sunsetting, but when I say beyond light, a lot of people think sunsetting. And the main reason why was not even just because of, there's two factors to it. The first factor was they took a lot out and they only gave us this amount back. So it was an imbalance on the stuff that was given back. But then you couple that with, they took everybody's favorite modes and everything out of the game. We lost Whisper. We lost Outbreak. I realized they're coming back. I realized Whisper's back. 
We lost um, Raids. We lost Leviathan. We lost Argos. We lost Valcor. We lost um, Scourge of the Past. We lost Galron and Crown of Sorrows. We lost Destinations, just yeeted to the Shadow Realm. IO, gone. Titan, gone. Strikes, gone, right? I mean, we lost Savathun Song. We lost this. We lost Crucible maps. Where's Emperor's Respite? Where's this? Where's that? Gambit maps are gone. You know, it wasn't even just losing our fun weapons it was losing a lot of what made the game fun and so that was the thing even though my gallon was sunset in d1 even though my fate bringer was sunset in d1 i could still go play house of wolves um if i wanted to if i wanted to go back and relive those campaign missions i could can i go back and relive red war no if i want to go back and relive um <clears throat> excuse me uh the crota back then i could have but if I wanted to go relive Callus in the Leviathan Raid, I can't do that. So it was this double whammy of not only not giving an equal amount back that they took out, but on top of that, getting rid of all of our favorite activities. And so it was a colossal failure, right? And so because of that, now Bungie's too scared to ever even bring up the, the S word that is sunsetting. It's almost treated like the word like Voldemort. And that's because of the negative reception they got. But unfortunately, what that's caused in Beyond Light is for what uh, Eli is, is referring to right now, um, which is the fact that because they can't take anything out now, because they have their hand tied because of what happened in Beyond Light, we are now in a constant one-upping, 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 one-upping. You know what it leads to? Things come out like, you know, a new forbearance is out or whatever, or a new this is out, a new that is out or or this and into the light. And it's cool. It's definitely cool. But, you know, not everybody is going to care <clears throat> to what wants to, you know, to the same level because there we already do have a lot of shiny new toys. And that's what's happened. And it's happening now on steroids with crafting, too. I mean, now crafting's made the game, and that's a whole different discussion, but crafting has also made it where, you know, the chase is gone for a lot of these things. And and once you kind of get your, your, let's just say you have a weapon that's, if we graded it, it's at a 9.5 when you've crafted it, and it only has 0.5 room to be better, you know, no one really cares about it. If you make the next one a 9.7, you already have a 9.5. And it might not be, and for most people, it's not worth the effort. So I get what he's talking about here. And I think it's valid. Not only is that really, really, it's 10 times harder than it needs to be for the devs, but it also leads to power creep. And in turn, with power creep, yep. what Bungie has decided is okay, it's just help getting bosses. That's going to be their answer True. to, okay, you got to And the thing is, too, is he didn't even know where crafting was going to lead to yet, because this was still so early. Rockets, fall asleep, run to the next area, done all but he already has forbearance on, which I already brought up. Why take it off ever? I, I still use forbearance. Because it's health gated. We got our first health gated boss in a raid, by the way. Caretaker, health gated. This is current D2. Okay? This is new game. I think this is what ruffled a lot of feathers from what I remember back a couple years ago. A lot of aspects to balance. They have PvP, Gambit, they have uh, strikes, they have weapon balancing subclass balancing and they have like power grind and let's just say general interest okay somebody added a good point as well armor and mods so here's the thing you need to understand with this game when they make a new dlc they're making a, a frantic scramble to try and check off every one of these boxes but it's not physically possible. So here's mm. what... I'm going to let him finish his thought, but this is something in a different variation. I think um, he's going to explain it differently than I'm probably about to explain it, so we'll listen to how he explains it. But <clears throat> one thing that I will say, and I felt like this for a long time, I do come from a software development background, and the, my least favorite project ever to work on was this triaging project. And I can't go into details, obviously, on anything, and I'm not going to go into details on anything. But what triaging means, though, is, is you know fixing a lot of things and basically updating a very old system. And so when you're updating an old system, let's say from 10 years, even longer, because that's what I was doing, every time you try to change anything, it's like coding on a landmine. And you know something might explode with every little minor thing you might do something that seems totally unrelated and something blows up from 2012 
or you do something totally unrelated and something blows up from 2015, you know, and it made coding feel like I was trying to, def- you know, every single time trying to like diffuse a bomb with wires. And if I, if I, if I touch the wrong wire, everything explodes. And on the surface for, our, you know, as a consumer, us, us gamers, you know, we see something break a lot of times and we're like, how in the world did this break? It was something so simple. But a lot of times we have no idea the dependencies that might root from it, with this game at least seven years ago in 2017 when this game was was released so it is very hard to continue to to make changes and to try to continue to build on what we've we've now established since 2017 while still also trying to take into account last gen as well that's another factor as well still having ps4 and in, in the old xbox as well you know no hate to those systems but you know it is a factor as well and that's just the technical side. And now he's going to explain the actual game side of this, I'm assuming. Uh, but I just wanted to at least get out from the technical side. That's one thing that I've always said is that, I mean, they're, they're trying to make changes to this t- and trying to code around things that probably exist from 2017 that they, that, you know, if they code in the wrong way, they might blow something up that, you know, just seems totally unrelated. And I think it just makes for a coding nightmare. And I think it makes it where even if they, let's just say, it's not that they don't want to over deliver sometimes certain things that might just not be possible with the current stuff we have. And so I think it's a combination of both, but let's hear what he has to say real quick. <clears throat> Here's what ends up happening. Like with Witch queen, they tried to fix gambit. What else did they try to do? They tried to make new weapons. Uh, they did void 3.0. Uh, they just tried to make like general improvements. We didn't really get any new armor mods. We didn't get a power grind increase. Uh, we didn't get strike overhaul. We didn't get PVP overhaul. And the changes that they've made with these things indirectly or directly affect these other things, whether it's intentional or not. And so what's, what ends up happening is players just get bored of these things much, much quicker because they were waiting for everything to be refreshed. When you have a new DLC come out, you want to be able to focus on all these things at once. And it's not physically possible for them to do all of these things at once. He's not wrong. <clears throat> I mean, I do understand what he's saying here, especially in the sense that, I mean, if you think about it in Witch Queen, because, I mean, if we use his example here with the different bubbles, I think we got one PvP map that I don't think came at launch. I think it was the the Throne World one that, people don't really like i don't think i forget what the name of it is but um yeah it's the one that people i don't think love that much at least from what i've heard <clears throat> and when you think about it i mean we we even got even more maps in curse of osiris than we did in witch queen so i mean i i would say there's definitely parts of the game that don't receive the same level of love i think there's a lot of reasons for that i think strikes are the same as well he brought up strikes i mean you know i've been missing strike specific loot for ages you know those very low percentage drops that give each strike their own unique identity going after the scion flare cloak well after i've finished the power grind like he's right I mean, you know like even after the power grind because you know strikes were given a lot of love <clears throat> you know now i'm in the strikes because i want the scion flare cloaks okay now i want the cloak of tanix okay now i want the hood of malak okay now i want the grasp of malak okay now i want the devil's dawn let's go to the pvp side okay now uh, we we've got a trillion different iron banner weapons so now i want the clever dragon now i want um in trials i want the different trials glows because those were really cool and people wanted to grind in those and they made scarabs and and all these different things that kept us on the pvp side I do hear what he's saying here, um, and I'm gonna let him talk a little bit more. But um, there were there were definitely aspects that were not given love, especially in Witch Queen. And I think the thing that really killed, at least Witch Queen for me, because like I said, I mean I can recognize at least that like, you know, the campaign was great. It was a great one time experience. Um, the raid I think was a great experience <clears throat> as well. I think Val's a good raid. I mean, uh, minus the the day one, you know. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, you know, thing that I think some people will attach uh, Val to its day one. But outside of day one, I think Val was a really good raid. But I think the core of the game was in the worst position it had ever been at that point. I mean, no PvP map on launch that was new. Because I don't even think that was on launch. Uh, we did get two strikes. Obviously, one was kind of a prizal of Dark Blade. But once again, they didn't have strike-specific loot. So you kind of experienced them once. And that was kind of it until you got to Grandmasters. But Grandmasters, I don't think 
accomplishes the same thing that strike specific loot did i think grandmasters are good in their own right i don't really love them but i think they're good in their own right but i don't think it replaces the issue that we're having with strikes right now um you know gambit didn't get you know like a new malfeasance quest or or a 21 percent delirium or breakneck-esque weapon um there was a lot of you know things that could have got us back in there there were no maps they didn't even bring back the old maps um <clears throat> and so what ends up happening is you enjoy your day one experience, even your week one experience, maybe even your 10 day experience all the way up until the day one raid comes out. But then after that, the core was in shambles. It really was. And I don't think a lot of people saw this. And I think this is why a lot of people got upset because they really associated Witch Queen to Vow of Disciple and Witch Queen to uh, Heroic Campaign, which no one ever is saying that these things are bad. They were amazing, right? But what keeps people playing eight months after a DLC, it's not the campaign. And, and a lot of times it's not just going to be the raid either. Um, a lot of times it's the core of the game. You know, are people still grinding strikes with, for strike specific loot? Are people, do they have, they have incentive to be in Crucible? I know people don't like Crucible, but in Destiny 1, the thing that kept our directory alive was people still playing Trials, are people still playing PvP. You know, is there still stuff to hunt for in Gambit? Is there a um, reason to do the master raids? Which as we know, you know, Adepts, uh, kind of fell short because of crafting. Uh, we had craftables in the raid, so the raid grind was gone too. Uh, so, you know, you kind of got your forbearance, and that was kind of the end of your your Valve of the Disciple experience. And because of this, we had an amazing week one or week two experience that 100% fell very hard off a cliff, in my opinion, by the time we got a few months out. And that's why when we got to, let's call it Season of Plunder, we plunged. I mean, we did, and, and that's a fact, but I think at the time, no one could really see this, and, and crafting off obviously was also a big, I think, issue with this, too. It, it was innovative. I mean, I'm great. That I was happy that they knew they tried to change things up. I mean, all we want is innovation, but um, in that process, they killed their grind, and so there's a lot of these circles that were not checked that I think led to um, the post-couple-week experience having us end up where we ended up. Let's listen to the rest and hear what he has to say. The only way to do that is to go to a new game. Because when you get a new game, you have to start all over. So again, when you have all these circles, you push them over here. Players have no choice but to focus on all these different aspects at one time. That way it's not a frantic scramble to do a few at a time. You do four of these now, and then in the next DLC, they try and cross off these four. And then it's, it's just back and forth. I know a new game is much, it's it's very expensive and the profit margins are less, but if you really, really, really care about- Funny thing is he got grilled for this, but then now the rumor is they've been working on D3 since Witch Queen, or at least that's what it said. Obviously take that with a grain of salt, but this is, this is true in my eyes. And like I said, I think a lot of these reasons are, there's a couple different reasons. I think it's partially, like I said, um, how the core was extremely overlooked. Um, but I also think the other thing too is just that since we've had sunsetting and beyond light, they've never been able to give us a true refresh because they always have to take into account what already exists. And um, I think that has taken a lot of, of their resources trying to play that juggle. So I do agree with this. And I do feel like D3, um, it was clear that we, we needed a D3. And, um, I don't think everybody will agree with that, but um, while, like I said, Witch Queen had a great couple-week experience, I do think it fell off after that, whether people will agree with it or not. About your player experience, the best solution is to make a new game. Because when I go make a new game, I may be able to carry over my character's looks and my emblems and maybe my shaders, but then I get to grind and I get to I get to fall in love with new weapons, uh, new subclass changes. Void 3.0 would have been a perfect transition into a new game. If they did all 3.0 subclasses in a new Destiny game, Void 3 feels really good in PvE. PvP besides or even Strand if it was supposed to come at that time. Different than Gambit. Like Gambit's okay, but let's 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 be 100% transparent here. Your players aren't talking about Gambit or recommending it to their friends. Strikes have gotten stale. You keep we keep making new strikes. Both of those are due to the core. Like I said, I mean I agree with them. No one's talking about Gambit, but you you know when people were talking about Gambit when they needed their 
their four uh, kills in one to get their malfeasance, and you know everybody was grinding to get those four kills, and like you know, have to do the team wipe for your quest, or or get in the meatball to spawn, or delirium, or like no one's talking about it agreed but they're they're not giving any reason to talk about it and i guess it goes back to once again certain boxes not being checked strike same deal i mean why is anybody going to play the hypernet current outside of it being a gm there's no reason to right like you know you might do your three strikes to to get to the the power cap because you know it'll give you a pinnacle when you do three of them but um once you're max power if you're not doing a GM, what's the point of doing a strike? There's no point. Um, it was a very different landscape in D1. There was still very much a point. I could be power level 400 in Destiny 1, but if I still wanted uh, Cloak of Tanix, then you, you know, I'm going to I'm fighting Tanix until that thing drops. Or Skeleton Keys, you know, but some variation of that to keep people in the strikes. Like, yes, Nightfalls are fun. Yes, Nightfalls are cool. Yes, Grandmasters, I think, do solve a need for players who want to be more challenged when... Uh, you know, they've already completed everything else in the game. And I think that's fine, but I think they've forsaken, no pun intended, they've forsaken strikes with Grandmasters, and they feel like they've solved the need um, that maybe they did, maybe the need was solved, but they, in my opinion, really hurt strikes in, in the process. Just my own opinion. Grandmaster Nightfalls are like i mean man they're okay but the artificial difficulty with modifiers and champions is just not it they're doing better on the loot side of things but like we were talking about earlier what reason do i have to go on to to do patrol if we have here it is again and this is what i was talking about earlier what reason do we have to do patrol and we don't that's the issue and that's the thing that i think that really the throne world struggled with back then and i mean he saw this and i'm sure he would attest to this I and mean, he might even say it but um there was just no reason to be in the throne world. The throne world was, was it, it felt extremely hollow. It felt extremely hollow. And that, that makes me sad because, you know, Savathun was talked up for so many years. We've been hearing about Savathun since Destiny 1. <clears throat> and so I think we all expected uh, the throne world to be on the same level of the Dreaming City as well as the Dreadnought. And I just don't think it was. I don't think there were enough secrets in it. I don't think there was enough evolution there. I don't think that there was, um, you know, we, we just didn't, like, just like the same example I'll give you. Where did, when did we get a okay, we have um, the raid come out. Once the raid's out, there's this new mission that's on the Dreaming City. After the mission, there's a portal that spawns. That people start getting on Reddit. Have you seen this portal? Have you seen this portal? Have you seen this portal? You jump in, there's a whole dungeon that you scan into. And then it disappears. And it's like, oh, it has to be the curse week. And, you know, and, and, and you know, looking all over the Dreaming City to find those different plates with the different codes for the different wishes. And, you know, and that was really everywhere. But, I mean, that made, that made all the destinations feel alive, you know. Like, we, we're not getting this, like, ever-evolving world that I, I, I know Bungie wants us to have. They want the, vol the, the, uh, the world to feel like it's evolving. Um, but... It's just not right now, and it seems like Helldivers has been kind of captivating that a little bit more, scratching that itch. It seems like I'm not very familiar with the game, but it does seem like they're scratching that itch. It seems like it sounds like at least, but he's right. There's no reason to do patrols, but I think all of us were in patrols a lot in Destiny 1, and there was a reason for that. There was a reason for that. Had a reason for, for people to, to go to patrol and link up and meet people. can you imagine if just random bosses just spawn to us in patrol or just random like not even just high value targets but they could do a lot more of patrol they could do a lot more of patrol people organically you would do 90 percent of the, the work yourself in game rather than having to have an lfg on bungie.net or people having to go into discord you don't see people linking up in patrol you don't see people linking up from pvp you don't see people linking up from random strike queuing I just, I, I genuinely... That goes back to the core of the game. ...would be to make a new game. In terms of returning player enjoyment and those people being able to recommend the game to their friends because it just gets into this cycle of people telling their friends to come back for this DLC. They play the campaign, they play the new raid, and then they're done. I remember this glitch. I think he's going to fall into the quicksand. I think this may be the end of the conversation on Destiny. I'll see. This boss has turned into a frog, dude. I do remember this. What Destiny 2 needs is either to get rid of a bunch of weapons. Like Which they won't. Just completely 
because I explained in Beyond Light they will not. Because the constant chase of like having to make a weapon that's better than all these other ones. Like I said, and if a weapon's a 9.5 that you already have for Barrens, yeah, you're not going after a 9.8. crafting almost takes away the entire point of grinding. I'm sorry guys, like I gotta be real, like I said, this isn't like a, oh, sweatsicle put you on to make this video or anything, but this man is, is saying things that people are saying now. Like now, people are just talking about the crafting thing, you know, killing the grind and... And I got to give him his props. I mean, personally, like, I mean, these are things that, you know, like, you know, myself, um, Evan, you know, him as well. Like, you know, you definitely, you know, think, but he, I mean, he was, he put himself in the front line to give these opinions and we'll see some of these comments here in a second. I mean, he got grilled for this, but now I think this is such a common opinion. Isn't that crazy? ...activity more than once. Because once you can craft the God roll, what point do you have left to do that activity? Bingo. He had forbearance on now. I have forbearance on today. I was using forbearance today. And that's the thing. I'm having such a problem right now. Like, I really want to care about some of these things. And it's just like, I have forbearance. And I can kill everything. You know, I can I can do, I can get to wave 50 on Onslaught. Or I can, you know, I can do the Whisper Heroic mission. Or I can do Grandmasters. Like, why? Why? You know, like, and, and some people will want to get that extra 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 bump, but the 99% of the players, they get their best thing, and that's kind of it. I just wish there was and that's why, if anybody watches my challenges too, sorry to cut them off again, what do I do every single time I do a challenge? I make a new account. It's the only way I get the rush again. Something new for me to, like, grind and just get good at just for the sake of wanting to do it. Not necessarily even for the loot, but there just isn't in this game. I just, I, I really don't know what the solution is. Like, if they're going to continue with Destiny 2... No, he he's right. No, he set what either the two solutions would have been, in my opinion. Like, eventually, there either needed to be a massive refresh, which, in my opinion, I think I explained pretty thoroughly that can't happen because of what happened in Beyond Light, or you move on. I, I think this was logical. I don't know why he got grilled for this. I know it was so early, but, like... This is this was logical. This is a very logical way of thinking. There's really no one answer or one solution that'll fix all the problems, and that's why I'm still under the impression that a new game would be most beneficial for them. I think this was well thought out. I really do. And like, you know, let's just look at a few of the comments here, right? Like, I mean, we have uh, it's crazy how fast people get over the hype. Last week, nothing but pays praise, but now it's that we need a new game. Uh, dude, what exactly are you wanting? Remove weapons from play. They did that with sunsetting and everyone, including yourself, disliked it. What they don't realize is he disliked that they didn't add an equal amount back to the game. The community has been asking for something like weapon climbing for so crafting for so long, and now people are like you, it's a bad thing. How exactly is Bungie supposed to please the community when the majority of his players have the mindset like yourself? As for what you said about wanting to do an activity for the sake of doing it rather than this is entirely a you opinion. People do the activities in Destiny for the fun of it rather than the loot. Plunder, we were at all-time lows. Let's look at another one. Um, <clears throat> let's just, uh, where's some more here? To be honest, I don't represent. think this represents how most people view the game right now. I've been enjoying every minute of new DLC. Uh, they don't need to revamp Pluto everything in the DLC. They just need to add a few weapons, maybe some new abilities and a good story, add some hard challenges. All of these have been done perfectly in Witch Queen. I'm sure I speak for a large amount of the community when I say uh, this is a high point of the franchise. We were at our lowest point the next fall. Sunsetting is bad. So in 2022, get rid of some of the weapons. Uh, people don't misunderstood what sun, be saying sunsetting is was bad meant. It, it did not mean that sunsetting as a term is bad. It meant that sunsetting the way it was implemented was was bad, and the implementation was god awful. I mean, it's true. It's true. Uh, to be fair, it's your job to play Destiny. You put more hours in Destiny in a day than I can play in a week. I think it's completely acceptable for you or any other streamer to think there is not enough content or incentive to play activities. As someone who cannot prioritize uh, Destiny, you can only play in their free time. I think the game is in a good position content-wise. Um, what else? Destiny 3 would not fix the problems mentioned. It pushes them back to a later date, and we would be running into the same issues by the time the second expansion of Destiny 3 comes out. Um, I mean, you guys are seeing this. Bungie releases the best expansion since Taken King. I disagree. Uh, sweat. They should delete everything uh, for our characters and start us over. Um, I mean, you see this. Yeah, I mean, this is... 
I personally think Destiny 3 should not be made. Um, yeah. My man really dropped an absolute garbage take, completely confident for the world to see. I respect the courage. How great did this did this age, his, this take, though? A new game is what Destiny needs, in my opinion. Fresh bones, fresh perspective, new version of their engine. It's a lot of likes. That's, that's a lot of, I mean, people seem to agree with this take, you know? I'll click on Astra Cross this. Pretty positive. Like, people are super excited for Destiny 3, and I think that's good, you know? I'm, I, I think... All of them are correct, and you know, uh, I'm glad you know that their videos are doing well. I'm glad everything's doing well. Like, like look at this one. I'm like, man, like, look at the ratio there. And so, this was just a few of the comments, and I, I think that everybody really should just, if you were one of these people, definitely, you know, I, I think Sweat definitely owes is, is owed an apology, and in my opinion, you know, like. He doesn't get all the flowers that he probably deserved on, you know, putting himself out there and giving his opinions. That can be scary as a creator. I mean, it's just the truth. And and that's uh, an opinion that I feel like um, aged very clearly well um, moving into this new era that we're in where we're not sure what's coming after Final Shape. And it seems like a lot of people are excited for a new game. And so that's all. I mean, ultimately... I, I think that, uh, you know, there's probably maybe some people as well that did agree at this. This isn't for everyone. I don't want this to be a blanket statement that everybody disagreed with what. But I did just want to give the man his flowers. You know, this was completely spur of the wind thing that I wanted to make. It wasn't something he told me to make. I just thought I'd make it. So there you go. I love you guys so, so much. Seriously, thank you guys for everything. I'll uh, see you guys in the next challenge or whatever we end up doing. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon.